Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. There's a lot to discuss. There's a lot going on. The world is in a state of somethingness. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. The video may be all over the place, but it'll all make sense by the end. I promise. Matt Haugen Chief Investment Officer of Bitwise in an interview with Laura Shin revealed that major institutions and big financial houses have begun to see cryptocurrency as a powerful investment platform. He noted that the crypto market is about to start rising massively. He further noted that the market is witnessing a significant leap in acceptance and adoption as more hedge funds and several financial and economic advisors have taken a giant interest in the crypto Market Matt noted that institutions now accept cryptocurrencies. This, he believes, is driven by the level of improvements made in trading, custody, regulations, and the advancements that have been recorded in the decentralized finance sector. There's a lot of news floating around right now about people who believe and keep saying, and we've heard this, it's now th week three of the constant news like this that bitcoin is about to explode something crazy with bitcoin is about to happen and it would have been it would have been something else if we had heard about this news maybe just once twice thrice uh but every single day multiple times is a bit out of control this one says bitcoin remains in uptrend altcoins show positive signs the cryptocurrency market and all world markets right now are um, not stable is the nicest thing I'm going to say. Over the last 16 hours, somewhere around there, uh, the cryptocurrency market was moving up, and then it started moving down, and then it moved back up again, and then it slid down a little bit more, and then it, then it moved up, and now I think it's currently like sliding back down. Uh, all markets around the world are fluctuating heavily because of whatever might be in the air. Um, we have maintained over 13.5 or 13 something. I don't remember the exact number that we're supposed to be over, uh, but we're doing that at the moment. A lot of coins are trying to push up and then Bitcoin goes down and everything also starts slamming down along with it. This one says Bitcoin could surge to $3 million within five years. This was said by a crypto hedge fund manager, Morgan Creek Digital Assets co-founder and partner. Jason Williams says Bitcoin could meteorically rise nearly 17,900% in five years as Bitcoin solidifies its position as a safe haven asset. In a Norwegian block exchange interview, William offered his bull scenario for Bitcoin. He said Bitcoin could hit $1 to $3 million in the next five years. People have no idea what it will look like when large banks and countries start holding Bitcoin in their treasury. And this is something we've discussed before, multiple other times. I have believed since 2014 they've been doing this. The news that we were getting in 2017 and 18 is that they were doing it. It's just that none of them have publicly come out to say, except for the... The Central Bank of um, Iran, which did it like three days ago, um, have publicly said that they are going to be accumulating Bitcoin. I think, I don't know, whatever. I know that the market at some point is going to go insane, but I wish that this kind of news really stuck in the minds of people who aren't banks or institutions or what have you. <clears throat> this was not the only news out there talking about Bitcoin's going to hit this number, Bitcoin's going to meteorically rise, if you will. There was a lot, and there's been a lot every single day. I think I saw one negative article, and it was something along the lines of uh, Bitcoin looks like it might not be able to hit 14,000 in the next couple of days. We might retest 13,000. That was as negative as it got. Uh, everything else is this. This kind of uh, Bitcoin looks like it's poised to go to some crazy number news. Um. <clears throat> I guess tying loosely-esque into this same exact news, um, the latest blog post from consensus developer Ben Edgington suggests that things are getting very close to the highly anticipated launch of Phase 0 of Ethereum 2.0. The first part of this milestone event is the development of the deposit contract, which has already been slightly delayed. 
as developers wanted to wait for an audit on a performance and security focused signature library called BIST. Blist? Blist. Is that, is that an L or an I? I'll, I'll say BIST. <laughs> Sorry, just woke up. You know the deal. Edgington says that the results of this are expected this week, although there are still a few rough edges and improvements to be made. He said the important thing is, as Danny reported on this week's developers call, that the audit is going well. Results are expected next week. And then we can pull the trigger on everything. The news that we got yesterday or the day before was the was the D word is that we wouldn't be seeing Ethereum 2.0 until December. Uh, somebody mentioned in the comments that um, November was just like a rough time frame that was given before. Come on, uh, we all and I and I made sure like on these days I knew I I was I know I I know when I get really hyped is because we kept on getting the 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 time frame of November over and over and over. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, as it stands right now, sure price going up, something like that. Ethereum 2.0 very very soon. Uh, definitely tying into that same thing we were just talking about. The number of Ethereum addresses holding 32 Ether or more has just hit a new all-time high of 125,540 wallets. This is according to data from the team at Glassnode, which also suggests that Ethereum investors are continuing to, continuing to accumulate Ether in anticipation of staking on Ethereum 2.0. The team at Glassnode shared their, their analysis of Ether Holdings via the tweet below. And here's a little chart. That chart is insane. For those of you who don't know, you will need 32 Ether to be able to stake Ethereum yourself and to create new coins on your computer. You will not need tons of hardware. You will not need a massive warehouse full of computers. <clears throat> Just you, your computer, and 32 Ether. Um, what if you have less than 32 ether, you will be able to stake on a staking pool. However, many people want to be able to do this by themselves. I, I, I it's an independence thing. I, 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 don't, I don't really know, but 32 is, is the number that people are aiming for. I wholeheartedly expect that tons of people are going to continue trying to accumulate to get to 32 ether, if not more, because if the more you have, the more you get, um, Things are looking bullish in the cryptocurrency space. The news that we keep getting nonstop is that great things are happening or around the corner are going to be taking place. I think, and I spoke to my friends about this, we've all been having the same exact conversation. We expect by Wednesday, if not Thursday of this week, for things to be abundantly clear as to where things are going to go. You understand what I'm saying. Um, so buckle up because I think it's going to be a very wild ride. I think markets are going to lose their minds and I'm not sure if that is a, an upward lose your mind or a downward lose your mind, but I expect very dramatic results from everything over the next couple of days. Anyway, that's all the price news. Not really. It's more like adoption, um, hype. This coin's going to a million dollar kind of news. And without further ado, let's move on. Um, in popular news, and I had sworn we had gone over, but apparently not, the Reserve Bank of Australia is partnering with the Commonwealth Bank and the National Bank of Australia, the financial services company Perpetual, and software company Consensus to explore central bank digital currencies. It sounds familiar, but we've been getting news about a central bank digital currency with Consensus. And just in general, them the making them for the last couple of weeks. So this is maybe it's why it's blending together in my head. According to an announcement from the Reserve Bank of Australia, they will be partnering with the Commonwealth Bank. I just said all those names. Um, in a project to explore the potential use of a wholesale central bank digital currency in the country using Ethereum-based distributed ledger technology. I don't even have to repeat the fact that they're all using Ethereum. The central bank revealed that they would be researching the development of a proof of concept for the issuance of a tokenized form of a central bank digital currency. The Reserve Bank of Australia mentioned wholesale market participants potentially using the digital currency for tokenized syndicated loans on a distributed ledger technology platform and exploring the implications of delivery versus payment security settlements with cross-chain atomic swaps. Wow, look at them being fancy. Um, very popular. 
but I, I, I feel like it, it is every single day. We get some type of a news that a bank is going to be making a central bank digital currency, and then it kind of pops up in the news as like this cool, amazing thing. One of the more popular news stories today, I, I get why, but it's still like, ugh, like no one really cares. Um, and this definitely ties into the next one, like almost... Um, Christine Lagarde... The president of the European Central Bank today opened up a matter of a digital euro to public consultation. And I'll tell you why that's stupid in one second. One of the questions that was proposed is, do Europeans want a digital euro that does not rely on intermediaries? It says, as Europeans are increasingly turning to to digital in the ways they spend, save, and invest, we should be prepared to issue a digital euro if needed. I'm also keen to hear your views on it, she tweeted posting a link to the survey and there's her smiling and there's a tweet and there's I assume the link somewhere uh, to the thing on it. Lagarde, who used to run the International Monetary Fund, said in a subsequent video that the survey means that consumers and Europeans can actually express their preference and tell us whether they would be happy to use a digital euro just in the same way they use a euro coin or a euro banknote. Knowing that it is the central bank money that is available and that they can rely upon. Uh, First of all, they don't care. Both sides. Uh, Citizens don't care and the bank does not care. The bank is going to do this regardless of what the public wants. Uh, It's the same exact way people have been like, hey, can you stop inflation because it's kind of terrible? And the bank is like, I got you, bro. And they keep doing it every single year. Uh, I think things are done like this to say that they have taken the steps to ask the public if they would like or dislike such a thing being released into the market. But the end goal always is control. It's the tracking of transactions. If this was the case, we would have no AML, no KYC, because the government simply wouldn't care what people did with their money. But they do care. Um, And then on the other side, as far as like consumers and everyday Joes, um, no one really cares. If you ask, try, try talking to your friends and family as if to they would prefer a decentralized euro, a decentralized pound or a decentralized U.S. dollar. Ninety nine percent of them are going to go. They'll look at you as if you're crazy because they have no idea what it means and they don't care what it means. The average person only cares that they have money. They don't care how they get it or where it really came from or what it does. As long as when they swipe their card, they tap their card, it says approved and they can keep on moving on buying the things that they want. So in the end, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I had to fall to lose it all, but I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I, as I was saying it in my head, I was like, that does sound like the song. The point is, the European Central Bank does not care. This thing is going to be re- released no matter what. <laughs> A decentralized euro, do you think that's actually... Do you think that the European Union is going to give up power to everyday citizens to allow them to run a node on their computer or on their phone? No. You no stop it. No, that's never it's never going to happen. And if anything is going to be decentralized, it's going to be that the European Central Bank and maybe the other central banks around Europe all run a node themselves. So there will be about what is it? 20 different nodes decentralized. Anyway, um, nonsense. It's the same exact thing last year and the year before that where the SEC was asking people in the United States um, how they felt about a Bitcoin ETF. We, we had two or three videos about that. And in one of the videos, we actually went through the actual, uh, what's it called? The website. And I think there were 500. Normally, whenever there was uh, an open discussion from the SEC to the public, they usually had around three responses for whatever the other things were about. This one, they had over 500 on the idea of a Bitcoin ETF being released or being you know thrown into the wild. And I, remember, I, I looked through a huge portion of them. And I could only find two that were actually negative. It was like, no, the public's not ready for this. We need more security. We need more regulation. <clears throat> so in that video, I was like, this looks this looks pretty good because, you know, the huge majority of the public is like, yeah, let's do this. Next day, no, sorry, denied. We need more uh, regulation. And I'm like, they, they, they don't actually care. They do these things just to say that, they, you know, yeah, no, we, 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 we allow the public to uh, say, say, say how they feel on the matter. We don't care. But we allow them to perfectly talk about it. It's all nonsense. Anyway, um, sure. And this one, I think, also ties a lot of um, central bank digital currency news because 
you know, logic. That's where the world is heading. Uh, this year was a very huge power grab. For those of you who did not get that, this year has been massive for a lot of people who've been trying to choke the system, as it were. It's it it's worked out for them. The governor of China Central Bank has made has given more details about the country's ongoing digital currency pilot. Yi Gang, governor of the People's Bank of China, said that the digital yuan pilots have processed over 4 million transactions to date, totaling more than 2 billion yuan, around 300 million U.S. dollars. The official delivered his latest remarks at the Hong Kong Fintech Week conference on the 2nd of November. This was reported by Bloomberg. According to Yi, the pilots have been going smoothly so far, having rolled out for extended testing in four cities, growth in demand in digital and contactless payment methods amid-19 have posed major challenges for central banks, so they try to juggle. It's all over the place. This was very popular news. People's Bank of China governor says successful digital yuan trials have transacted $300 million. China processed over $300 million so far using, of course, um, this shouldn't even really be news because, first of all, um, unlike this that we went over with the European Central Bank, people here will have absolutely no say in the matter. Zero. They're going to have no say at all. Um, this thing has been created. They've made sure to clamp down, stamp down, stamp out uh, other stable coins within their country. We had news about this last week and the week before. They have thrown a boot at Tether and all these other things because they only want their coin to be the main coin that's going to be used. Uh, so, uh, with companies, I'm pretty sure being told, "Hey, you're 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 going to use this and transact in this." Of course, they've transacted 300 million dollars and have done over what was it, four million transactions? Well, it seems pretty likely when you have to do it that it's going to end up taking place. That's like being like, "Oh, I put on my shoes this morning." Well, I had to go outside. I I I couldn't just stay in. It's it's just completely logical uh, that this was created to be used. The government's going to make sure that it's used. And they're, of course, going to have numbers at some point and be like, yeah, we did this. That's, it's, it's absolute nonsense, um, if you get what I'm saying. It's going to be used, and therefore, uh, the, the transacted value will also increase. So at some point, we're going to have news that they did over a billion, and people will be like, wow, that's crazy. No, it's not. It's just it's, it's the method to their madness. Anyway, um, cool. A lot of central bank digital currency news Every single day, it was not this way last year. Once again, this is power grab. Like, it's been massive, and it's a little intense, um, but we knew we'd get to this point at some point. I just assumed we'd have, you know, years down the line, but I think 19 helped to accelerate a lot of things when it comes to finance. Let's move on. Oh. In, in news that you're supposed to be afraid of, uh, there's a lot of news going around. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin hash rate dips. I think the news is, uh, I think somewhere in China, I think, I don't know if they're having monsoon season or the rainy season is over. But a lot of people who are in the path of this or have their hardware in some certain place, I think either they had to shut off their machines or the flooding was happening it's something to do with water and rainy season or monsoon season somewhere along those lines the news everywhere is that bitcoin appears to be in peril because its hash rate has dropped bitcoin isn't looking good its hash rate has dropped bitcoin isn't so and so hash rate has dropped bitcoin's hash rate has dropped bitcoin's hash rate has dropped over and over and over and i kept on seeing this in some some websites you can actually scroll down to the bottom you can see that they have like a little like comment section everyone's like oh my gosh this is terrible what's gonna happen to bitcoin um let me tell you here and now this happens like thrice a year easily 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 there's always some type of a a a a weather-like event that causes Bitcoin's hash rate to fall off at some certain point. The crazy part is, it always goes back up. If you've been here for the other videos, we've had many instances before where we've looked at the charts where like, we talk about the hash rate is in a new, brand new, all-time high. It's because there's always a dip and then it always shoots back up. This happens every single year. It is cyclical. For those of you not looking at the screen, this article is from 2020, as one might have imagined. This article says, clues to explain yesterday's Bitcoin hash rate flash crash. 
This is from 2019. This one says Bitcoin faces second largest difficulty drop in history after latest adjustment. This one's from 2018. This one says how close did Bitcoin get to a disastrous chain death spiral? A recent drop in Bitcoin hash rate could spell disaster. 2017. You get the point. This happens every single year. Over and over all the time. I don't know why people create these articles to try and get other people afraid. Why they think it's appropriate to try and... I don't like the word FUD, but it's a little... It's it's very fuddy. Why create these things? Why try to get people scared of a hash rate that we know is going to happen? Because it happens every single year. There's always a hash rate drop. All the time. Every single year. It always happens whenever Bitcoin's difficulty gets too high. It usually happens around March and April. For some reason, around that time, this is when people start unplugging their machines so that there's a recalculation of the actual hash rate of the difficulty for it to mine Bitcoin. It falls down, the difficulty, and then everyone starts plugging their computers back in and then the hash rate goes back up. It's always the same news all the time. Or sometime around this year, the end of this year, around this time frame, is when the thing happens with the yada, yada, yada. Every single year. You get the point. This is why I said you should be afraid of this news because they want you to be afraid of this news. But I'm not sure why they keep releasing news like this because it does absolutely nothing for the cryptocurrency market. This is why a lot of times I think whenever there is fear in the market, it's because of things like this. If news like this ends up getting out and people are like, oh crap, something, something's wrong with Bitcoin. Like the hash rate dropped. What did the hash rate drop? And people don't usually read the actual articles because people just look at the actual title see that it's something scary, screenshot it, send it to their friends, and their friends also get scared, and then it keeps going out further and further and further, and then we get crazy news that something, that Bitcoin's in peril. You get the point? This is why reading is fundamental, and this is why I always say do your own research. If you ever hear me say something that sounds absolutely insane, challenge me. Go look it up yourself, figure out if I'm not lying or telling the truth, but just, you know, always dig a bit deeper. It, it, it's, it's, it's good for your mind, it's good for your spirit to to learn more anyway uh this was also very popular news for today bitcoin's hash rate dropping it happens every single year all the time and let's move on as always a very special thank you to my patreon supporters professor wally from gunbite university snacky chan tolek banan auspicious agile and blockchain decentralized peter navarro williams david james attila the han yasha harari oscar maldonado Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Steuer, Nostromo, John Zarsen, the Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Gray, Sigmo, Hermione, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Shadow, Wise Knight, Owl 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coley 3D, Damien Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Garner, Jimmy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitch, Jesse, Day, and Kyle Skip's Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Bodemic Boatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigra Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. And thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links at the moment. Uh, before I started this video, Bitcoin was green. Greenish. It is currently down by 1.19%. This drop just took place. You see what I mean when I said the markets are all over the place? No one has any idea what's happening right now. I read a couple of articles. I think Ethereum hit $400 over the evening. And the articles floating around were that as we keep getting news that, it appears that Ethereum 2.0 is going to be launching very soon. This was kind of the euphoric movement upward. Uh, once again, Bitcoin is a gigantic magnet and every coin is required to follow it. Except for Binance coin, which had a little dip over here. Yes, uh, we will see what happens. I tried looking for any type of uh, stock news, if you will. This one says European markets muted amid U.S. election uncertainty. Uh, this is, for those of you who don't know, you should, if, if you've been around for like six months, uh, markets are reacting insane to what's going to be happening tomorrow. All markets. Across the board, uh, futures go up, stock prices go down. Stock prices go up, futures go down. Cryptocurrency market is all over the place because I think everyone is just looking for an answer to what is going to happen. Um, we'll see what happens to our market. <clears throat> I mean, once again, we don't have a choice. We will see by Thursday or Friday, but uh, it's... Definitely looking interesting. I do. 
I mean, look at it. It looks it looks completely insane. Like it just constant slams up and down over and over. Uh, I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Um, happy November, everyone. Uh, happy Monday, everyone. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.